Hey guys, Sherry with Alicia Ashley. Summer House Martha's Vineyard Reunion. It only took us two seasons to get here. Child, they was in that clubhouse with Andy. Talking about all things that went down this season. Hmm. Jury's out. Was it a good one? Or did they leave a lot on the table? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Sherry with The Legend Actually, and I'm back. Y'all, I know, I know, I know, I'm all late. I've been wanting to get on here and talk to you guys about Summer House Martha's Vineyards reunion. I was watching Sunday just like all of you were, but y'all, listen. It was Memorial Weekend. First of all, I hope everybody had a safe one, and that we took some time to pause and remember those that lost their life fighting for our freedom. That weekend also was my birthday. Your girl turned the big 5-1 on last Friday. I had an amazing time. My husband and I took a little trip just to South Carolina, just a little getaway, a little shopping, a lot of eating. So if I'm looking a little thick on this here screen, that's that birthday, lunches, dinners, cake, you know, your girl had to celebrate. But anywho, I'm back now. And finally, y'all, we're going to get into this reunion. So first, let me say, I always start every reunion with the looks. So everybody was pretty in pink, to include Mr. Andy Cohen. Well, let me take that back. Everybody was pretty in pink, except for Miss Jordan. Y'all, did she not get the memo? I mean, everybody had on pink or a variation of pink and she had on this red kind of halterish top. Well, honey, we're going to get into it. First of all, I always talk about who I think had the best look. And tonight we're going to talk about who also had the worst look. And I'm not going to just, just give it to one. We're going to do it by gender. We're going to get the best dressed male, best dressed female, Worst dressed male, worst dressed female child. So the cast, like I said, everybody was in pink. I'm going to start. We're going to go with negative and the positive. So <clears throat> my least favorite ensemble for the males will go to Amir. I'm not a fan of guys with the whole cutout, particularly in sweaters. I did not enjoy that look. I think when you're surrounded by guys like Nick and Alex, and even Preston, though, I thought his suit was a little over the top, but when you're dealing with guys that dressed real snazzy and sharp, and you come through with a sweater with your arms out, and I don't know, it just, it didn't translate. Amir was my least favorite for the guys. My least favorite for the girls, no secret, I gotta give it to Miss Jordan. I think Jordan is absolutely stunning, but I was not sure what she was trying to give with that outfit. You know, a lot of people likened her top to a fruit roll-up, and I have to say, I concur. I felt like I could reach the screen and just peel a little piece off and just, you know, get a little snack. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't feeling that, Jordan. And, um, but I mean, listen, she's a beautiful woman. And child, she pulled it off, I guess, but it just didn't go with the whole ensemble. I was not feeling it. So look, I'm just going to be real. I, I didn't like the outfit, Jordan. Okay. Now on to the best dressed for the ladies. I want to give it to Noelle. I thought there were some honorable mentions. I thought Bria looked great. I love the way Jasmine looked, but I'm giving it to Noelle. Noelle looked crisp, clean, and together. I mean, those edges were laid, that cute ponytail, face fresh, face card was not denied, cute dress. I love the style. She just looked very, very put together. Face just beat down, honey. She looked good. And again, for the guys, child. We don't even have to think about it. You know it's going to go to Mr. Nick, right? 
because Nick has fashion sense for days. And he was giving again, y'all. He was sharp. He was. So we got the looks out of the way. You know, like I said, the whole pink thing. Andy joined in on the fun. I, I thought that was great. A lot of people were complaining that their first reunion was filmed in the clubhouse. But come on, guys. Now, those of you like myself that are Bravo fans, Bravo stands, well, you know that these shows that are fairly new to the network always have their first reunion in the clubhouse. Vanderpump Rules did, Below Deck did, Summer House did, the original Summer House. Um, I mean, that's just protocol. So that was no slight at all to the Martha's Vineyard cast by any means. That's just, that's just protocol. So there was nothing, nothing that was wrong with that. The fact that it was a one episode, others had kind of complained about that. Really and truly, I think that some of the other shows could take a page out of their book. I mean, not necessarily all of them, but Yes, there were parts I felt like they could have gone a little deeper into some of the situations that we watched. But overall, I'm starting to think that these three-part reunion specials that we're getting from the Housewives, from Vanderpump Rules, could be easily wrapped up in one or two episodes. So I wasn't mad that it was a one, one episode or at all. Mm -mm. So child, now let's get into it. So the next thing we always talk about with on reunions is the seating. So, you know, who's getting that coveted chair by Andy? So this, for Martha's Vineyard, we had Bria and we had Jasmine. Now, I was a little confused. I don't know about you guys on why it was that Jasmine had that, that chair by Andy. But keep in mind, guys, because, you know, we would think that that chair would go to Summer because Summer was having the most kind of going on this season. But... If you think about it, because Summer House Martha's Vineyard did not get a reunion for season one, Jasmine is the anchor of the show. So out of respect for that position, I'm assuming that's why she got the chair by Andy. Makes sense, right? I think so. So y'all, let's get on into it, okay? Well, before we get into it, let me ask a quick, quick favor, guys. Can you go ahead and hit that like button for me? Give me a thumbs up, please. Because your sister, she works hard bringing y'all this content. So go on ahead and give me a like, a little encouragement over here. And then I really want to hear from you. So I want you to tell me what you think of the reunion, what you think of my thoughts. And let's put it in the comments below so we can have some interactions. So we can talk about it, you know? And then... I'm going to need you to please hit the subscribe button. If you come over here, I've been recapping throughout this, this season. If you've been here checking in with me to see how things are going with Summer House and some of the other shows that we recapped and then my interviews and pop culture segments, what you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. I want you to be a part of the Actualizer family. So come on in the fold. Y'all come on in. And last but certainly not least, if you really like what we're doing over here, do the right thing share it with your family and friends. I mean, when I find something good, I always like to share. So go on ahead and hit that share button. All right, guys. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get into it. Andy starts off with kind of like an around the room, you know, speaking to everybody. He starts from the end and he goes to the first chair on both sides of him. So he kicks it off with Preston. Preston is now engaged to his partner, Donald. And he gives him a congratulation and Preston is excited and he is also oh ready to be able to, um, you know, swing his bling when he gets his ring after their nuptials. So congrats to Preston and Donald. He then gets to Noel and he was gonna ask her, you know, being that this is her first reunion, which technically they're all of their first reunion, but she's new to the cast. So this is like her first showing, if you will. And he asked, was she nervous? Child, she was not. And she said, no, I am here and ready to shine. And shine she did. <laughs> From Noel, 
then he goes over to Nick and he asks Nick if he's run any marathons lately. And Nick being Nick, of course, of course he has. He had just completed London and Boston. So yeah, he, he's still he's still in those marathon streets and he takes that seriously. Good on him. He looked great and um, he's fit running the marathons. Good on you, Nick. So then from Nick, he goes to Summer and he asks Summer who was she most looking forward to clearing the air with. And she basically said that she was really looking forward to all of them getting to a place of at least being able to coexist and leaving the show being respectful of each other. And Andy seemed to really like that answer. And I did too. I mean, she knows that she cut up on this season, child. And I, I, she's got some rights to, 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 you know, some wrongs to right, if you will. But baby steps, right? So the whole coexist thing, mutual respect. I like it. And then from there, he goes to Jasmine and he congratulates Jasmine on the baby, little Silas Jr. And she said the baby was doing well, very happy, very smiley. So then he goes to the other side of the room and he asked Alex how he was. And Alex said, he said that Chris, did John and Chrissy give him any tips? And he said that he was told to just be himself. Now, y'all, am I late to the party? It took me a minute to figure out who was he talking about, John and Chrissy. Apparently, honey, John Legend. So I found out in those Bravo streets that Alex, at first they said they were friends, but now it has been revealed that they are indeed related, that Alex and John Legend are first cousins. Who knew? Hmm, small world, right? So then he goes to Amir and he asks Amir, has Natalie officially cut off his manhood? Andy was, Andy was being shady on this one, but it was cool because it seemed like Andy was really having a good time with the cast. So he was kind of letting his hair down and, and making jokes. It was actually, it was actually a good look, but Amir answered, uh, no, it's, it's still there, which Andy seemed to get a kick out of y'all. Quick aside, so I think Andy really enjoys Amir. I know he certainly finds him attractive, y'all. I know I keep doing this, but look, I was there, okay? So when I come up and think of these little memories, I want to share it with you guys. I remember at BravoCon, um, Amir, I was at a taping for Watch What Happens Live, and Amir had thought that someone left him out of a social media it was actually him and Carl Radke from Summer House, the other Summer House. And it turns out that Andy was the one that had left him out of this event or out of the know of somehow. And Andy was like, trust me, if you were in my DMs, I would not leave you on unread. Child, Andy has a little crush, crushy crush on Amir. He thinks Amir looks good. So I think he was giving him a little extra sauce, uh, a little extra shade just to play with him, child. Just a little tidbit there. From Amir, he then goes to Shanice and he says, you know, welcome. You look beautiful. Goes over to Summer and says, doesn't she look beautiful? Child. And you know that was shade because Miss Summer had talked about how Shanice was the worst dressed in the house. So that was that. Then he goes over to Bria and asks Bria, how was Milo or where was Milo? And Milo is safe and sound. You'll be happy to know over there in Germany with Simon. So Bria was able to tear herself away from little Milo long enough to get this reunion done, child. So honey, they don't waste any time. They hop right on in to the Noel, Summer, and Alex situation. So there seems to be two different stories on whether or not Noelle was fully aware that Summer and Alex had indeed had sex before. And when Andy asked Summer, had she told him, she said, yes. Noelle quickly says, no, nah, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. We're going to address that lie right now. Child, Noelle did not come to play games. She was coming to clear her name. Summer comes back and says, no, uh-uh, mm-mm. I told you that he and I had hung out 
before, but we were just friends now. And then it wasn't until the night of the lobster dinner. And of course they do their flashback and we get the infamous scene where Miss Summer says, you didn't invite the person that you've been inside of. And from Summer's perspective, when she said that, because, well, Noelle says that she didn't know until she made that comment. But to Summer, what she was trying to say that even if that was the case, that they had a discussion after the dinner where Summer was then very frank about the fact that they indeed had had sex, where Noelle says she thought that he attempted to. She didn't realize that they had actually had sex, which that was cleared up. And then to what Summer was trying to say, despite all that, despite what she's saying, when I did clarify and she knew, she still pursued him. And they went back and forth a little bit, but Noelle was like, okay, yep, that's on me. You're right. I did. Okay. Here's the thing. And, and, you know, and then they bring Alex into the mix because the thing with Summer and Alex. But let me just say this about Summer and Noel. Y'all, this to me is just another example of why it's so important that we as women and, and, and girlfriends I mean, it comes out that Noelle and Summer aren't as close as the show was trying to portray them to be. Miss Noelle has been making her rounds, child. If y'all haven't seen it, go check out Kim Pyre's IG Live. Shout out to Kim Pyre, where Miss Noelle talked to him for a cool hour and a half, honey. She had a lot to get off her chest after this reunion. But she explains that her and Summer really did not know each other that well. Um, that actually that it had been stated that Summer had dated a roommate of hers and they had had, they had spoke a couple times before filming. And there was also things that did not make it, of course, on the cutting room floor that we did not see that transpired between Summer and her and actually others. And, and we'll get to that too. But so I think Noel was very unhappy with the way it was perceived that she was perceived, you know, and the fact that, you know, it looks like she got rejected and then called her mom crying. She clarifies all that somewhat with her interview um, with Kim Pyre. So check that out. But again, what I wanted to say is this is why it's so important as women and girlfriends or even acquaintances to be honest, because what's real? I mean, and it may not change a thing. It may not have changed a thing. But I really feel like if Summer had have been real with her and said, girl, look, you, him and I hung out, you know, it was a physical relationship. It didn't go where I wanted it to go. But I'm really not comfortable if you pursue him. Now, if she did it anyway, okay. Well, I mean, then she would have a right to feel how she'd want to feel. But when you're not 100% honest, because some of Summer's acting out, not not all of it, but some of it had to do with that. You can't convince me otherwise at all. I mean, you know, I think she was very upset that Noelle tried to pursue Alex. There was flirty. There was flirting that was done in the kitchen during one of the scenes. And you see Summer like literally get in between them and, and make a comment or ask a question. Child, that behavior is all very, very akin to the fact that she was just not feeling the fact that Noel was trying to push up on Alex. So, I mean, it's clear. I mean, we as women know, you know, kind of girl. I would say girl code if they were closer friends. I mean, if they really weren't, I guess not. But still out of respect or even out of keeping the drama down. If she'd been honest, I don't know that Noel would have gone there. Those are just my thoughts. So then we get into the whole Alex and Summer of it all. And they also have conflicting stories about how their fling ended. Alex says that he basically said, look, as of the last time, he just wasn't that into it. She was like, oh, no, nah, mm -mm. no, we, we, you know, we did what we did and it just kind of fizzled out. And you said you wanted to go on and be an F boy and, and, and do F boy things. And child, that was something that was a whole other thing you know he was 
defending the fact that he never used those words. Jasmine jumped in and said, no, I've never known him to be, um, to act that way. A viewer question was saying, you know, why would you call him that when in the house he was respectful of the women and he kind of moved how he wanted to without, um, you know, without it being anything other than what it was like. He was honest about how he was moving. So it would be like, it would be their choice if they wanted to, whatever. So I'll, I'll have to agree. You know, I didn't see where he was you know, um, pushing up on Summer in a sense of promising her something that, she, I mean, that wasn't going to happen. It was a mutual consensual fling that just didn't go anywhere. She had the right to feel how she wanted, but I think she should have been more honest. But then that seems to be, you know, kind of Summer's thing. She kind of bottles things up and it's not fully transparent on how she's feeling until it gets all the way up here. And then she's had this reaction where she's, you know, blows up. And she's not very proud of, you know, her actions. And so I hope if she's taken anything um, from looking back and seeing herself on this season, it's that she does need to work on communicating her feelings and opening herself up. And she talks more about that as we go into the re reunion with her abandonment issues. And it all makes perfect sense, y'all. It does. I, I, I feel for Summer. I'm not going to lie and say she was one of my faves. I've really enjoyed Noelle. But two things can be true. You can love Noelle and Summer both at the same time. So I'm not saying that you had to pick a side or even that there is one necessarily. I will say that Summer just... She didn't come off well this season. She definitely knows that. It's even been said that she's not coming back or that she didn't believe she's coming back child word on the street is none of them may be back but we'll get there too so then we talk about or he talks about how summer had freaked alex out by taking the infamous picture and sending it to the group she said you know or to her defense, Jordan jumps in and said, well, we're a friend group. You know, it is not uncommon for us to take pictures and send it out to the group. But Alex lets everybody know that it wasn't so much that she took the picture. It was the fact that she took the picture, sent it, and the way he found out about it was Nick's like, hey, what are you doing with Summer? And he was like, what? And he's like, yeah, you know, she sent this picture of you out to all of us. And I think then he started to see, uh-oh, you know, this may be going in a direction I'm not comfortable with. So, and the two of them kind of get into it back and forth on who says what or who did what, who broke it off with who. And basically, honey, he tells her fall back autumn. Y'all, did y'all notice how quiet she got when he said that? Honey, apparently this comes from when Alex was on Watch What Happens Live and he told the story that they had gone to check out an open house together and she introduced herself as Autumn. We didn't get really a lot of backstory on why. Is that her alias? Is that her real child? We don't know. But once he called her out and called her Autumn, child, mum was the word. So, I don't know. At any rate, then the last part of the Nick and, or I'm sorry, not Nick, honey. We'll get to Nick. So let me let, let Nick rest. But the, the last part of the Alex and Summer saga goes on to talk about how um, when Summer was on Watch What Happens Live, and this comes off of a viewer's question, you know, how she had basically talked really badly about Alex. And Alex thought that was rich when he was on his episode of Watch What Happens Live, stating that she had left him multiple voice notes like she was a crazy ex-girlfriend. Summer acknowledges she sent one note. But child, before we could get into the meat of that, Shawnice interrupts and says, Andy, can I say something? He says, yes. And she says, I'm just glad that for once, I'm not labeled as the crazy one. Says who? Says who? Shawnice, we were having a moment. Now, I know you don't know reunion etiquette yet, and this is like y'all's first one, but ma'am, 
when he's getting down deep into an issue of something that has gone on this season, you don't interrupt with a lighthearted joke that has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. Okay? I wanted to hear what they were going to say. I mean, I wanted to get what crazy vo voice note did she leave? What did she say? What was she mad about? Really? Thanks, Shanice. Ciao. Anyway, then... To wrap the whole saga up, Andy asked Alex and Noel, where did they stand? Did they hook up? And they were like, no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're friends. We're just friends. And then he asked Noel and Summer, where are they? And Summer basically says they're cordial. And, you know, Andy asked now that, you know, things have kind of unfolded, cooled down, do you, do you, do they think that they'll get to a place that, you know, a better place? Noel is adamant. No, ma'am. No, sir. She's under the 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 point that once a person shows you who they are, you believe them the first time. Miss Noel is pretty much done with Summer. Again, there was some more backstory to that in the Kempire interview. She had said that you know the night that Summer pushed her. Um, there were other things said. There was another moment that, that she got heated with her, cursed at her and all that. Like, there was this, like, you know, Summer had energy for Noel. But I told y'all, I truly believe that Summer was angry that Noel had basically tried to pursue Alex. And it kept coming up, you know, whenever she would have a lot to drink or she'd be angry about something or, you know, something would become, that would set her off. It always came back to that. So, so it just doesn't look like they're going to be pals anytime soon. If probably not ever, Noelle seems to be pretty much done with Miss Summer. And I honestly don't think Summer, outside of maybe trying to save face, really wants to be friends with Noelle either. So moving on from that, we then go to Mr. Amir. So, Amir this season, let me say, y'all, Amir, you know, reading different things that viewers and fans of the show had put out there on the Amir and the Natalie stuff, honey, he did not get a whole lot of love this season. You know, for several reasons, he, I don't know, we'll, we'll get into it. Basically... He, Andy went back where he had said the the comment about Natalie would cut his penis off if he strayed. And he asked Amir, did Natalie trust him? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, she trusts me. That was just a joke. Y'all, he's just so green. He's so green. I mean, just silly. I don't know. I mean, I'm just not here for it. I did not enjoy their relationship. I didn't enjoy how he inflated her and kind of deflected upon himself. Though he says he's a very secure man when we get to her comment that she made. It just seemed like, and it's okay. I mean, you know, relationships have their own dynamics. I mean, child, the relationships on the show, you had Amir, Natalie, you had Bria Simon, um, God, last season, Jasmine and Silas, look, it wasn't like anybody's up there showing the, the perfect couple, perfect match, you know, perfect relationship. I'm not saying that, but for several reasons, I didn't enjoy Natalie and I don't think Natalie is good for Amir. So basically Andy was asking again, does she trust him? She said, he said that she did, but you know, their relationship was new at this point. They had been dating a year. And the fact that, you know, they were away from each other. She didn't know, you know, how he was going to be in the house. And they were actually in the, the stages of building trust, if you will. Okay. If you say so, child. But the way she was acting, no, sir, she does not trust you. Okay? No, she does not. And so then they ask and talk to him about clarifying um the whole thing with saying that summer when he was telling natalie that summer was touchy like he wanted her to know that and summer was like you know i i find that to be 
not true because I'm not even affectionate with my friends. Like my friends will know that I'm not the kind that's going to come up and hug on you or whatever. And Amir does elaborate by saying, no, no, what I meant by that is like, if you're trying to get my attention and he demonstrates by grabbing Shanice's wrist and says, no, you grab people like, you know, to get their attention. And then like you, when you go on the speak, you know, it kind of, the, the grasp lingers. And I kind of wanted to just let her be aware of that, that that's what you do. And then he basically kind of proves that he had said something to her about it. Cause she said, well, I wish that you had had this conversation with me before Natalie came to the house. And he was like, I did. He was like so much so that because he said that she was touchy not only with himself, but with all the guys. And y'all, did y'all notice how um, Noelle was over there smirking and nodding her head? Child, she don't have any love for Summer. Mm-mm. No. So, anyway, after he said that, he said, you know, I did say something to you about it. So much so that when we would be talking, you would do it and then you would note it and notice and be like, oh my goodness, I'm doing it. So, I mean, he did apparently say something to her about it. So, I don't know if, you know, I guess it didn't, it didn't look good the way that he made it seem to Natalie, like, you know, watch out for her or, and then Andy asked him, well, does Natalie not trust you to be around Summer? And he was like, oh, no, 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 she trusts me. I just wanted her to be aware, you know, because I wasn't sure what was going to go now. Child, whatever. And then he goes on to say, you know, people had stated that Natalie was standoffish. He agreed, yeah, Natalie's standoffish. And then, child, we go to the infamous comment that she made when she's in his friend group meeting some of them for the first time. And she says to them, I make in one month what Amir makes in like a year. And they both work in real estate. So to give you some perspective, she's meaning, you know, she can sell more homes in a month than, and get commission, more commission than he can within a year's time frame. And I remember when that episode aired, I told you guys, I was done. That is so off-putting. I mean, you know, the friend group all agreed it was and he was going to say that he felt like that comment was, and before he could say something, the group basically said emasculating. Now, I guess you could say that's subjective because if Amir doesn't feel emasculated by it, then is it emasculating? But to me, there's just something about good old fashioned respect. If your partner respects you, that kind of information was not needed asked or wanted in his friend group who needed to know that what was the purpose of that information you know he made the comment that oh no I, it didn't bother me because i purposely chose a very powerful and successful woman to be my partner and i'm a very secure man all oh, that's well and good amir and it is but what would be the purpose of your partner making a statement of that such to your friend group that she was just meeting to prove what? And that's what I mean. Whether he took it that way or not, his friends did. And it's off-putting. And it was certainly off-putting to watch. I don't know if that's a girl you want to be your wife. You know, marriages, relationships are supposed to be about uplifting each other, not tearing each other down. But I'm going to let you have that, sir. So Andy does after that ask the group who in the group thinks that Natalie's right for him and child not a soul raised a hand or mumbled a word until Miss Jasmine does chime in and said, well, I do think they're cute together. And Shanice agrees. She says, yes, I think they do look good together, but I don't know if Natalie is right for him. Touche. And, and I agree, Shanice. I don't think so either. I mean, looks can be deceiving. So, Andy then asked Amir if him and Natalie are still together. Child, yes, they are. And not only are they still together, honey, they have getting ready to close on a home together, he said, within a month. Now, I've since seen the Instagram. They have not only closed, they, you know, they've bought the home together. They, they moved into that home together. 
And the home is in Amir's name, but he has Natalie on the deed. Y'all, this poor child. Boy, where your mama at? I mean, really? Because at this point, Annie's like, y'all been together how long? And he's like a year and five months. Okay. Now, you're scared to be in the house with your friends because when she left, he was like, you know, I hate to see her go because that's my fun leaving. And now I have to go back to tempering myself. So if you're in a relationship where you cannot feel like your partner trusts you enough to be on vacation with your friends because she thinks you're going to do something, she emasculates you in front of your friends, she's messy and does things to try to tear up your friend group or start mess. And then you go make one of the biggest investments you make in your life is your home together with no clear in sight commitment. Because when they even ask Natalie about their relationship, she goes and says that he's joining her real estate company and, you know, like a business relationship. She never said, oh, we're going to work on getting engaged. We're getting married someday. We want to have kids. None of that. So I'm lost. Good luck, Amir, baby. You are in my thoughts and my prayers child y'all that because mm -mm. he's a cutie pie he really is but Andy says you know um basically he makes the comment what could go wrong yeah what could go wrong a lot I mean he was being facetious that is not smart but then you know Amir talks about that him and Natalie are going to take the next step as far as marriage and that a ring would be bought and that he said, Andy made the shady comment. Okay, so when is Natalie instructing you to propose? And everybody's like, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one to include a mirror. And he said, you know, we're going to do it um, when the time is right and it's 80 degrees. So whatever that means. And Noel asked the question, honey, we all want to know. Why did he tell that girl that all the girls in the house wanted him? Child, where? Jasmine's like, honey, I'm married. Bria's like, and I've been in a relationship the whole time. And his only comeback was, well, um, I was told that night in the hot tub, Shanice, that you wanted to have sex with me. That's all you got, bruh? Because Miss Shanice, honey, she wanted everybody. And the child didn't have clothes on all the time. I mean, if that's all you got, so. I mean, that's not every girl in the house. Boy, you was reaching. You was reaching on that one. But yeah, basically, that that's, that's all he had with the comeback on that. So, honey, theory debunked. The ladies did not all want you, Amir. You know, Preston even jumped in there saying, you know, I was more crazy over you than the girls. And Andy was kind of like, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, Andy was too. <laughs> Ciao. All right. So we get off a mirror, we give him a reprieve, and we go back to Miss Summer. And they do the flashback of all of her antics, you know, her and Jordan fighting, her meltdowns, her crying, the infamous thing between her, Bria, Shanice, and Noelle, where she pushes Noelle and she hits the box, you know, certainly not any of her finer moments. After they do the flashback, Andy asks her how she's doing. Summer begins to cry because I'm sure it's hard to watch. I mean, she, she does in fact admit that she was going through a lot and that it's hard to look back on that. And she acknowledges that she hurt some people and she's truly, truly sorry. And, you know, she sounded sincere. You know, she said that she just, she was just really struggling. And so he asked her how were things between her and Bria, because he said that Bria seemed to be, you know, the target of a lot of her outbursts. She said that her and Bria were good. Then again, we revisit her and Noel, and her and Noel are not good, child. They, like I said, I think it's going to be a, a coexist type thing. She said she certainly didn't wish her, you know, any bad or, you know, nothing bad on her that they just, you know, they just were. 
And so then um, he asked, how were things with uh, Jordan and Preston? She said that Preston was the love of her life. She admitted that her and Jordan were currently going through a tumultuous time. They did not elaborate on that as to what the issue was on that. But um, basically that the love was still there, but for something was keeping them from being good. So I don't know. And then, so we wrap up on summer and then, oh, well, I do have one more thing to say about Alex or about summer. Alex did pipe in and say, you know, is there a way that someone could be struggling and going through something, a rough time, but still treat people around them with kindness? And Jordan did step in there for summer and say, you know what, she didn't have the tools. And I thought that was actually really um, very profound to say, you know, everybody that's having a hard time and particularly because a lot of her issues came from her abandonment issues being left by her mother as a small child, having to be adopted by her grandparents and not knowing who her father was. Though she did reveal that she found out that the guy on Facebook was indeed her father. She did 23andMe and that was um, confirmed. That's not necessarily a good thing. She doesn't have a relationship with him, but at least she now knows. But I say that to say that a person that has childhood trauma, abandonment issues, when they are suffering or going through a bad time, revert back to childish outbursts and maybe childish ways of reasoning and do not have the tools to have the emotional maturity to be able to deal with what they're feeling or communicate it and, you know, be able to be respectful of people in the process. So I thought that was fair. Something to maybe reflect on. Um, we're going to do a segment because I'm going to start um, revamping the show a little bit. And so the weekends, we're going to have some time where we do some sherry chats. And we're going to talk about emotional maturity and um, childhood traumas and the ways they show up in our lives as adults. I like watching these shows sometimes because watching others sometimes help you think about yourself or other people that you know. And maybe you get to see, you get an inside view and as to how, you know, they go through their journeys and how they reconcile and, and things that they reflect and grow and learn about themselves. So with Summer, I, I certainly understood, like I said, her decision to leave early. It was two days early. There was more to that as well. Um, Noel revealed that just like they did about Mariah, they had a house meeting to decide whether she should stay or go. It upset Noel because the consensus was that she should stay. But because there was actually a meeting, that there was actually uh, some conflict behind it, Summer decided to go ahead and leave. So that was a lot of why she left two days before the finale or two days before the show wrapped up. So just to give you some background, and again, if you get a minute, you know, I, I believe in shouting out my fellow YouTubers. You know, Kim Pyre does great work over there. Check it out. It's actually on his Instagram. But he goes on now. We go to Jordan, and Andy asks her about her alopecia struggle and how she's doing. And she said that she was doing good, but she was currently in the midst of a flare. So she's getting ready or she's been in the midst now of starting treatments to get her hair to regrow. And Andy gives her kudos for basically bringing awareness to alopecia. There was a huge, um, you know, outcry of support for Jordan through her alopecia struggles. And a lot of people that have the same struggles reached out to her. So she was, I'm glad she received that support. Summer wasn't her best self this season. I'm certain the alopecia, you know, probably, you know, did a number on her confidence, which was part of it. But come on, guys. I mean, Summer was sort of like that on season one, not nearly as bad. But then even on Winter House, she she did her episode. She just, 
I don't know. Jordan seems very closed off and moody and not friendly and very funny about any attention she gets from her male suitors. And she does get it because she's beautiful. But I don't know. I, I haven't got her figured out. Of course, it's not my place to figure her out. I will say she did not give a lot on this season. Um, We'll get into more of that in just a bit. Then um, we had a viewer question for Preston and they were basically asking Preston had things gotten better with his family since the passing of his father. He said, actually, no, things had gotten worse and that him and his sister had incurred now. Um, they had inherited his deceased father's debt and getting called from creditors and things. And so that's caused things to be strained with his family. So that's a shame. And then Andy asked Summer, why didn't she feel that she could confide in Preston and Jordan the way they did in her? Because Jordan had her alopecia struggles that she shared with Summer. Preston shared with Summer about his struggles with his dad's passing and not wanting to attend the funeral. And then when Summer was going through her things, she didn't share with them. And she said it went back, like we said, to her childhood. The fact that whenever there was someone that she loved, that was the caregiver in her life. She was abandoned. She was afraid that if she was too vulnerable with them, that they may leave her and or at a later time, use her vulnerability and the things that she shared with them against her. All that, like I said, it, it, it makes sense now that she says it. And so we get a chance to see Summer through a different lens a little bit on the reunion. So I thought that was good. That within itself was actually, um, that's what reunions are, right? You know, you, you get the cast back together. There's some self-reflection that goes on. And then, you know, we get the answers that we're looking for as to, well, you know, what was that about? What happened? So, I mean, for that, I thought that was really, really good in the reunion that we got to hear a lot from Summer about what she was going through, why, and her self-reflection and growth or some thereof. And so at that point, we then go back to, well, to Bria and Preston. You know, Bria and Preston have an interesting relationship. I think Preston really summed it up when he said that he saw Bria as a sibling. You know, Preston did his little, um, his little interview, uh, what do you call it? I guess when you, you know, you make your rounds, he does interview rounds. So he'd been on several different podcasts talking about it. He sat with Carlos King and others, Brooke Ashley, shout out to them. And, you know, he never, and when he was on Watch What Happens Live, he never failed to take the moment to talk about how Bria annoyed him, how, you know, she really got on his nerves and she, he did shade her a lot. And so, he said that, you know, their relationship was their relationship, that a lot of people didn't understand it, but they did, that he would love to get to a better place with Bria or explore where that could go. And if it's nowhere, he was fine with that. So Preston was doing a lot of talking in circles that didn't make a whole, whole lot of sense. And child, I was a Preston fan. I don't know that I'm that much of one now because I don't know if it's the show that's getting to him or that's just who he was because the things that he even says about his Silas who was his line brother there in um Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity he was in the wedding and the way he talks about him and then Jasmine it just I don't know it doesn't line up to who I thought that Preston was season one child things happen people evolve I don't know but Bria said that, you know, currently Bria had him blocked on social media and she said that she just really felt like he singled her out. You know, he had made comments on the show about her appearance. She said she just felt very shaded and jaded by him. And he said, well, yeah, Bria, but that's when we're filming. You know, let's talk about when we weren't filming. You know, I've been there for you. And then he talks about when Bria got herself locked up in France and she reached out to Preston and Preston was able to get her an international attorney that helped get her out of jail. 
And he said, I was there for you when Simon wasn't. And she's like, what are you talking about? Simon came and got me out of jail. Child, anyway, to make a long story short, their relationship is their relationship. I, Bria gets on his nerves. I don't know that it'll, that'll ever change until, you know, either Bria changes or he changes, child, whatever. And so that was Bria and Preston's little segment. Then, y'all, we get into Bria and she's asked, what was the biggest obstacle that um, she had in her relationship with Simon? Y'all, she basically said it was the long distance and the fact that he doesn't listen. Now, I'm going to give her the he doesn't listen piece because Lord knows that was all with the flamingo gate, okay? With, you know, the night that Simon went and put that flamingo suit on when she asked him not to the night of Nick's party. But if what she said is true, why did she not mention the fact that, you know, he didn't stand up for her throughout all this racist stuff that was going on that she was facing in his circles with his family long distance? Child, I don't know. See, and that's what I'm talking about. I think that Bria pulls things out when she finds it to be advantageous to prove her point. I'm not saying that she hasn't faced um, racism. I'm saying that if it was something that was just burning her like that, why wouldn't that have been her big obstacle? Why wouldn't we further have talked about that? Hmm. Right. But at any rate, she was asked again, why was she so mad about Simon and the flamingo suit? And she went on to explain that she had already talked to Simon prior to that this party that Nick was having was a black tie event. And not only that, that it was an important event to Nick because it was in honor of his deceased line brother. And this was the night that we were, um, they educated everyone on the black sororities and fraternities, like black Greeks and HBCUs and the black culture. And she said, you know, she felt it was so important and she had already told him that and that you know he could wear it by the pool but on that night she just needed him to put it away okay Bria I'm gonna side with you on that because she was embarrassed and rightfully so I mean that was embarrassing and you know so she's saying that basically Simon despite her effort to make him understand why the night was important and why he couldn't just cut up and act stupid because it was a serious event and that he just kind of threw cautions to win and did what he wanted to anyway because it comes out that Simon really likes the attention he gets on that camera, child. Because we get into the Andy asked, well, Andy asked the group, well, I'm sorry, let's, let's back it on up. He asked, the question came up or rumor, and this is before we get to this, but that he was told that a lot of them feel like Simon is with Bria for clout. And she was like, no, Simon's a multimillionaire. Um, you know, he just likes my job. They don't really have reality shows like this in Germany, you know, and he he's interested in it, basically wants to be a part of it. And Andy says that really sounds like he indeed is with you for the clout. And Jasmine kind of jumps in, you know, every because everybody was kind of like, hmm. Jasmine jumps in and says, well, I'm going to speak for the group. Well, Andy asked her to speak for the group. And she says, like, I'm kind of done doing that. But she does it anyway. And she said that her, meaning Jasmine and Priya's mother, both felt the same way. Simon was a great guy. But Simon seems like he really wants the attention that he gets on the show. And he wants it at the wrong times. And so... Everybody kind of agrees that he, he he doesn't hate being on that show, y'all. He he really enjoys the whole, you know, Bravo reality TV thing. So there's that. So then we go on over to Jasmine and they do a flashback on her journey, how she kind of struggled with, you know, her and Jordan's relationship, her and Bria, the fact that she was missing Silas during a time when she was carrying her baby. And at first she had kept that a secret and then she shared it with all of them and 
Of course, Andy comes back and asks her who was the least supportive during the pregnancy and, you know, while she's had the baby. And child, Jasmine wastes no time to go right in on Miss Jordan. You know, I told you guys when she made that comment, when Jasmine made her announcement that she was indeed pregnant, that how she knew it was Jasmine's first pregnancy, but she didn't know if it was Silas's first pregnancy. And, you know, because I don't know. I mean, look, y'all, rightfully so, that would make me mad too. Jordan was clear, or Jasmine was clearly upset with Jordan over that. She has not gotten over it. Jordan said that she was joking. And Jasmine's like, well, did you not think that you should have a conversation with me, you know, prior to it airing that you would say that? And she was like, no, because that's my humor. I, I really, it was a joke, but I, I apologize. Y'all, I don't know. And then Andy asked the group who missed Silas. And the only ones that raised their hands were Jasmine, of course, Bria, Alex, and I think Shanice might have. But, honey, the consensus was that they did not. And who did not? No, I take it back. It was Amir, I think, that raised his hand, not Shanice. But Preston did not. You know, and again, I told y'all, that was his line brother. And again, he stood with Silas in the wedding party. So that's strange. And, you know, he said that, you know, they hadn't spoken in a while. Well, of course not. The man's been deployed and, you know, I, I, child, I don't know. I, I got nothing. Nothing he said to me landed properly and made any sense. Jasmine went in to want to know why she was kind of pushed out, you know, the Jamaica trip. And Summer said that she'd ask the first one that didn't want her to go. I think she said was, it was Shanice. And then Jordan, of course, because they weren't talking. And Shanice said that she didn't um, want her to go because there was tension between her and Jordan and she just didn't want the drama. And Jasmine was like, you know, when do you know me to go around causing drama? Child, to make a long story short, uh, the girls weren't feeling her at the time. Uh, Preston, he was a part of it. She didn't really understand that because of the fact that, yes, he was in their wedding. They knew each other beforehand. He, she, Jasmine was the one that introduced her to the group of ladies. And he was like, okay, yeah, you keep going there, but... You know, uh, you did and, you know, you're the one that introduced me. But at this point, you know, I can have my own relationship with these women. And Andy asked, so at what point does Preston get to have his relationship with the women becomes his own and, and takes the training wheels off and, and you step back and, and you don't like hover, I guess, a mother over it. Like you don't take the credit for the friendships that he's formed on his own with these women. And she said, yeah, clearly, you know that was it but that she had looked at because she was saying yeah you're right you know Preston's a grown man and not only that I look at him as an elder statesman and I thought is she being shady I mean I don't know is Preston a lot older than the rest of them I don't know but she claims what she meant by that is that Preston should be the neutral party like she was looking for him to kind of be that middle ground I think he did a lot of that in season one. I think by season two, he didn't want to. In another interview, he made the comment that it seems like people always want to pigeonhole and put the gay man in that spot. He just didn't want to be, you know, typecasted as that, you know, as as the sounding board for everybody. You know, at, at certain points, he didn't want to be involved in some stuff. And some stuff, I guess he had his own stance on. And, um... Jordan said her piece on Jasmine on how she felt that Jasmine was being very inauthentic, how it seemed like in season one, she was really pushing Jasmine on a mirror and she said it felt like she was puppeteering them all, you know, and Jasmine just basically said, you know, I, I don't know about you, but life it's hard to be authentic in this space I guess what she was trying to say is and I'm not sure if she said it in the right way in the first state but what she was saying was where where her and Jordan became friends and met 
and who she is as a woman now, you know, she's rapidly evolving. She's now married. She's now a mother. You know, the times that they used to have back at the Playboy Mansion or in their Playboy days, it, it, she's not the same person. So what may be inauthentic to Jordan could still be the authentic Jasmine, right? Because two things can be true. You know, the girl that was your best friend back in the day, because you guys had the same things in common, has now grown up, has become someone's wife and mother. And though that same girl may be in there, she may have evolved into someone that's different or priorities are different. Life is different. That happens. Sometimes we outgrow our friends. We outgrow people, period, right? So I really think that's kind of what's going on there. And, but I don't think that Jasmine should be beat down for it. If, if you're all adults, you know, that's what happens in life. And with the same respect, though, Jasmine may realize that she may not get the invite all the time now. You are the wife and the, and, and the mom. And when they're going off to do single girl things, you might not get the invite. I don't know, guys. So now we go on to Nick. And they do his flashback. Nick had a rough season as well with the whole handsy gate and you know, the bone carrying Natalie, his relationship with Tasia, and then his confrontation with the girls. I think he really seemed to be very upset that he was portrayed in that manner, that he, that he got that angry on camera, I guess, if you will. Because Nick seems to be a very contained brother, a very cool brother, very together brother, right? And though I think he still handled himself well. I mean, he, he was making sure the ladies were accountable and what they said. I mean, or what he was told that they said. And, you know, for every word that it changed, we went from handsy to, to you know, eyes uh, wandering to flirting. You know, he, he made sure every buzzword was, okay, so I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. Though he was clearly angry, I think he handled himself okay under the circumstances. So, but I think that the person that he is, I think that that bothered him a lot. And... So he said that when he looked looked back at that, that he did not like the fact that he'd gotten that angry. And that though, you know, he looked and saw that, yeah, there were things he could change. He did want to talk to them about the fact of intention. That I guess he wanted it to be validated or he wanted the girls to validate him the way that he, his intentions were not bad. So that anytime that he may have held onto their shoulder a little long or arm around a little long, that the intention behind it was not, like he said, not then to, to scoop down and do a booty grab. It, it wasn't to be, um, you know, to, to be provocative or to touch them in a sexual way. Or that wasn't his end goal. And, you know, some people don't understand personal space or, you know, people's um, comfortability in touching, it's not the same. And so I think that he got a good lesson in that. And, you know, Andy asked the three that had had the talk, the girl talk, Bria, Noel, and Shanice with Natalie inserting herself, did they know that Summer and Jordan had already had a talk with Nick regarding his handsiness? And they said they did not know. And you know, Nick, who still is a little on the angry side, particularly at Bria, because Bria maintains that, you know, I still feel like if he was drunk and, you know, I was single, that if I was down, that, you know, I could probably get him to sleep with me. He'd sleep with me. So Nick approaches her again on that. And he says, you know, with you, you know, you came at me with the whole sleep support thing. You know, let's go take a nap. And she was like, yeah, I mean, that was sleep support. You know, like he was like, right. It was a joke, right? You know, and Bria was kind of like, and so his point was, you know, I let you talk to me like that. You know, I didn't come and, and go through the group and talk about Bria doesn't, you know, want to be with Simon. And, you know, he didn't do that to her. He didn't say those words, but that's what he was implying. Like, I didn't make it a thing when you said, did I want to come lay down with you for sleep support? Which he could have. And by the way, Alex did make that point saying, you know, you say this about Nick. Nick can say the same thing about you, Bria. And she said him. Touche. Um, then they ask, 
was they asked Nick, are him and Tasia still together? Sadly, they are not, y'all. They broke up. And he said that it was they, you know, had different goals and things they wanted to achieve that they felt that they could better do that apart. And <clears throat> Andy asked, was Tasia embarrassed by Nick? And he agrees that she was. And he also asked, did that play a part? And I think, you know, he said it played a part, but it was not the deciding factor. So that's a shame. Um, then, you know, he, he addresses Amir with his comments of saying how Nick had his, you know, that Nick's eyes were wandering. And Amir explains that, let me go back to Shanice. When Shanice was twerking and or was running around topless, he was saying that, whereas in himself, and he tried to include Alex in it, you know, Nick was like, nope, mm -mm, I'm talking to you. You were the one that made the comments. I'm talking to you. Not, don't bring Alex in this. But he said that, you know, I turned my head or I would get up and walk away, but you would kind of sit there and take it in kind of like ogle and, and enjoy it. Y'all, yeah. and then, you know, he, Nick defends himself by saying, well, you know, how about the time when she was down the slip and slide or the time that she came out? You know, and she was topless and, and I turned, I turned my body, turned away. Did I not? And they were like, yeah. And Shanice is sitting there with a silly, you know, grin on her face. You know, it's a shame when you got to be the topic of the one that can't keep their clothes on. And, and, you know, they're berating the guy for looking. Girls. Now, I'm not saying that being that he knew he had a woman, particularly that he has a woman and that he's on national TV and all of this can be captured for her to see that he may not should be there, you know, really all in the mix of it all. But I mean, that going, I mean, I personally want to appreciate him just being in the house with a girl that can't seem to keep her clothes on. I mean, cause a man's going to look, that's just a man being a man. I mean, not excusing it, but I'm just saying y'all, let's be clear. Let's, let's be real here. Honey, put it in the comments. What do y'all think about that? I mean, I mean, it's much to put in the comments, but that really got under my skin because Amir is going to act like, you know, he's so much better the man or the better boyfriend because, because your, your woman's crazy and, and, and your child, anyway. So basically because of that, they ask, or Andy asked, were um, Amir and Nick's relationship, friendship, um, altered in any way and of course there's a rift now he said they went to a game together an nba game and amir hopes that it'll get back there but yeah that did some damage to their friendship i mean rightfully so and then andy asked if amir if he knew that natalie was going to be the bone carrier and child, this got on my nerves when he was like, no, you know, she, she was trying to do good. You know, basically she got involved in what we do here, you know, in a game of telephone. Nah, bruh. Mm -mm. And I was proud of Noel for stepping in on this moment and saying, nope, your girlfriend was messy. You know, that's honorable for you to try to take up for her, but she was messy. She, we three said what we said, but we was never going to go any further. When she said we should tell, we told her not to. It was her that wanted to go to Tasia. It was her that wanted to insert herself in the mess. It was her that took a rumor where none of them even said that he had done anything to them or touched them at all. And she took it, blew it up, and made it a thing. And, you know, no matter how much Amir tried to defend her, it's just not defendable, Amir. And I was really glad Noel stepped it up, saying, you know, this woman also let the three of us stand there and get talked to that way, never opened her mouth to say, you know, hey, I had a part in it. This was me that said it. Sat there and watched those girls go at it with Nick like that for him to go at them. And she just sat there on mute. That was messy to the highest degree of mess messiness. Okay. So Amira has to then digress and say, yes, it was messy. But Natalie would like another chance to come in and, and get to know you guys and y'all to know her. She's not like that. And if y'all will have her, no, sir, we don't want her. No, thank you. No, thank you. She showed enough. And Nick said it best when he said, well, you know, let Natalie know 
if she in fact wants to get to know someone, try letting her understand that you do that by talking to someone and getting to know that person and not talking about them. Good on you, Nick. And so from there, um, they ask, this is a final thoughts um, segment. So it's just little things that we wrap up, you know, the Amir and Mariah thing where Mariah baits him for the apology where, you know, Amir didn't take accountability for his piece in it. Jasmine piped in and said, that's what was so off-putting when we were watching. I agree, you know, that he stood by and let Mariah and Bria get into the escalated fight that resulted in Mariah being asked to leave the house. And it never once said it was me that actually put the dog stuff in the laundry. And he's like, you know, we didn't have any towels. We were down to drying ourselves with hand towels. I didn't care what was what. All that may be well and good, sir, but you knew that you're the one that did it. You could have said something and softened it off of Bria and it not escalate. But anyway, he didn't want to take any accountability for the fact that the fight escalated to that level. Got you there. But you should have acknowledged the fact that you were the one that did that so that she would get off of Bria. Just because it was Bria's dog, Bria did not put the dog stuff. Watch out. It's so stupid. I sound silly explaining it for you guys, but you get what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, then we go over to Preston and Phil. Did did Preston think that Phil's apology was um was uh, genuine? You know, he seemed to accept it when they were on FaceTime. Preston was like, "Well, what could I do in that moment but accept it?" You could have not if you didn't really think it was genuine. But okay. Um, then he Andy asked about Nick and the tattoos. Did that that tattoo Nikki V have his DMs on fire honey it did in fact Nick said his DMs got a lot of love and as a result Andy asked had he considered getting tattoos he has not and then you had Summer on Shanice being the worst dress of the house child silly stuff <laughs> and a flashback to asking a question that was actually for Amir, I think, when Shanice jumped in and said, Shanice. And Shanice says that's what hurt her feelings was the way she said it. Summer says, no, I didn't say it that way. I said it slow, which she, she did. But nonetheless, she said her name as worst dress. She said she didn't mean the fact that she was worst dressed because she didn't have any money because at the time Shanice was unemployed. But she said that you know, since then, I didn't like what you had on on your Watch What Happens Live episode either. And they did a flashback to that shade. And she was like, yeah, well, after you made that comment, you came and asked to borrow a sweater. And she was like, yeah, because I can pair it better than you. Child, who cares? You don't like her style. My thing was, we didn't get a chance to see much of her style because she didn't wear no clothes. And, and honey, you can't say, well, I didn't have the money because bathing suits cost money. Then bikinis cost money. So it's a choice on, can you just put some clothes on? Then we could then assess your fashion style. Because I couldn't tell other than skimpy bikinis. That's basically all we saw you in. But I digress. Last but not least, child, they talked to Shanice about how is it that she keeps bragging about dating all these high-end dudes, these NBA players, and she ain't had no money. And she said, well, whoever I'm sleeping with, you know, or I'm dating, I don't date for money. And that was clear. And Andy asked her, does she have a job now? And y'all, she's employed. She's in software sales. And that was the conclusion, my friends, of Summer House Martha's Vineyards reunion. I think it was done pretty good. Like I said, it was a one episode or they don't all need to be dragged out for two and three parts. Were there things that could have been um, more explained or delved into a little more? Sure. But we got the gist of it. But breaking news, found out today that Summer House Martha Vineyard has been put on pause. Now, to a lot of people, they think that means it's canceled. It doesn't. It doesn't. Because in the article, it did say canceled. I mean, it did say pause, not canceled. My thoughts, it is on pause to do some recasting. And I and and I say this because 
I think ratings wise, it did okay. Um, the fact that they got their reunion and Andy seemed to enjoy the group. I think though that they definitely have to recast because one of the things that I said when I first had made a decision, hey guys, I'm not gonna do the recaps. You know, I started off and I stopped for an episode and then I was asked to come back. And I'm glad I did because I ended up really enjoying the season. But what Summer House Mothra's Vineyard lacks that the other Summer House franchise has is the fun aspect, you know? Summer House is a group of friends that get together for the summer. There's parties, there's fun, there's laughter, there's silly, right? It, it just wasn't bringing that. It was a lot more drama. It was a lot more downtrodden. And that's okay, too, because you're going to have aspects of that. But they probably need some more youth, some more umph. I think Noelle was a great addition to the cast. So she's already made the comment that she has friends that she has recommended. I think we could use a couple more guys. Um, no disrespect, but Nick and Alex are a little one-dimensional for me. Um, Amir can go. Jasmine, it's going to be hard for you to keep up with this group being now a new mother. I could see them demoting her to friend of the show. And I know that's rough as being the anchor, but... The premise of the show doesn't fit your life anymore. So I could see that because I do not, y'all, want to see them. No disrespect, y'all. I did not care for Silas season one. I did not. I could not stand the way he spoke to her and treated her. I think most of us felt the same way. I mean, she acknowledges it looked crazy on TV and it did. But that energy, I just don't want to see that back in the house. It was very mother-fathery. It was very, he was extremely off-putting. Very Neanderthal. I, I can't. And then now that she also has his baby, y'all. Mm -mm. So I think that they are on a pause to do some recasting. So there is definitely more to follow on that. So guys, I'm not going to hold you any longer. I mean, that's what we got. Let me know what you thought about the reunion. Put it in the comments. Did you guys think it was good? I thought I could give it a 7 out of 10. I thought that there's much to be done, but it's still a new show. I think there's enough to come back for season three. So I hope that we truly are pausing to do some recasting and that they will come back. Because let's be clear, you know, Bravo's Black shows, we we now have Married to Medicine, Real Housewives of Potomac, who is hanging on by a thread. Married to Medicine is still doing well. Real Housewives of Atlanta was paused and they're coming back with another try with new recasting. Y'all, I don't know. Um, I I really I really enjoy the concept. I, I love the summering in Martha's Vineyard. I love the scenery and I love the premise. I just want them to get the casting a little bit tighter and I want them to bring it next season. I hope they have a great successful season three. But guys, thanks for hanging out with me this evening and, and, and chopping it up about Summer House Martha's Vineyard. I will be back this weekend with some more content. This channel is in the process of getting new shows because now we have wrapped up Martha's Vineyard. So I will hop back on Real Housewives of New Jersey on Mondays because Bravo Mondays are my thing. I also have got a new interview coming your way. It's going to be really exciting. Um, I'm not going to spill a whole lot about it, but just know that we are going to have some amazing ladies up here that is going to give some education, some needed education that we all need on financial literacy, emotional maturity, things that we as women, and particularly young Black women, sometimes you make some mistakes in your life financially that takes a lifetime to recover from. And so there are some things that we want to talk about that we want to make you aware of. Some tips, some strategies, some some getting healthy in an area that a lot of us don't focus on until much later in life when it needs to be something you're, you're thinking about a whole lot earlier than that. So I'm going to leave it there, honey. More to follow. So you guys stay tuned because I've got something cooking for you guys. But as always, thank you so much for tuning in. I love all you guys. Please continue to share, y'all. We are still trying to reach our goal of 5,000 subscribers. We're going to get there, but we need each and every one of you to share, share, share. So thank you guys. Good night. I'll see you next time. Bye.